to show you today what CS First is and how you can use it in your classroom. Present. I'll put the sign in one more time before I leave this window in case someone else sign, uh, shows up right now. All right, so CS First is in correlation with Hour of Code, and it's through Google for Education. And what they've done is created lessons, and you know they'll even send you materials if there's materials that go with the lessons. So they do expect you to commit to um, teaching the lessons and things like that. So I'll walk you through uh, these up here first. So on this first page here, they just kind of walk you through and tell you what it is and it's a free computer science curriculum and it gives you some uh, little quick videos of what it is they do use MIT's scratch program uh, to for your kids to use uh, to teach the the uh, lessons and they use a lot of videos with the kids and step by step especially uh, with the younger kids and um, it is recommended for grades third and up. I do have a coding session this afternoon that's more for K through second. Um, and even if you have no experience with uh, computer science at all, you can still teach it. So that's uh, what's great about this one. And um, there's a little overview of all of the lessons, or a few of the lessons, not all of them. And the subjects that it uses or um yeah and then um, just a few little benefits here um there where it says yeah there's your free classroom kit that it comes with um and then you just use your sign in to um your google sign in so we'll look at the curriculum here and they have a different one so this week, since it is computer science um, hour of code, you may want to start off with those. And then if your kids are really into it and they like it, there are longer activities, which you can go throughout, um, take longer, you know, more than an hour, several days, several weeks, even uh, multi-day activities, things like that. So, and then they do get harder. So more advanced, um, even up going into game design, which is really fun. And um, here's the resources. And so it does give you everything you'll need to teach CS first, um, even with what we're doing right now, which is distance learning, some video training, teaching materials, and even live workshops so that you are prepared. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in. And did I push the sign in? Yes, I am a teacher. And I just use my um, school credentials here. And so I don't have a class started. So I'm going to go ahead and um, create a class here. This is how we go. And we'll name it. Uh, Demo class as usual. And I think I like this color. All right, so once you get your class started, um, all you have to do is start adding your people. And you can use uh, your Google Classroom here. And you could open this up. I have not done this, so we're going to kind of walk through it together and tell your students to follow the instructions, enter the class code right here. So there, or you could just share it to your Google Classroom, which I think that would probably be the easiest. And so if I were gonna share it there, I can uh, make an announcement and there it is. So I would post that to my students and done. So then now my students are invited and you can see what that looks like um, right here in the announcements. And so it'll give them the link and 
tell them where to go and how to do it. it gives them the instructions there. Sweet. Okay. So not as difficult as I thought it was going to be. And if you have other teachers that you work with, you can have them use this right here, this code here. So there we go. There's your class. And that's it for that one. So if I go back over here, um, I did start this, uh, looks like it was last year sometime in March. And that's about all I have to do there. So if I click on one of these, though, it's going to take me to that activity. Um, I can add more activities if I'm done with this one. And if I'm not sure which activity to start with, I can go here or I can scroll down and look at some of the activities that are here. And again, it's going to tell you whether it's an introductory activity or if it's um, more advanced, things like that. Um, you can go further down if you're already more advanced into it. You can you can look and see if there's some intermediate ones that you want to do with your kids. If you're teaching older kids, they've already have some experience. You could you don't have to start with those uh, beginner ones. So just for um, the, so that you can get an idea what this looks like. Um, if I click on one of these, it's going to give you um, the activity. It's going to give you some examples. It's going to give you the materials. It's going to give you the lesson. So if you want to look at what that looks like for you, you click on that. And there's, like I said, it has a lot of videos. Here's the lesson plan on the side over here. So I opened it up in this window here and go ahead and make this a little bit bigger for you oh, oh. maybe 200 okay so it gives you the overview the details the objectives everything you need um and in sections, so you don't have to keep scrolling every time you come back to your lesson plan. If you're already down here, you can you click on that. Whoops. And let's go over here. There we go. And go to that section there. So some pretty nice uh, vocabulary words here. You got parallel parallelism debugging control structures and then it gives you the standards and common core standards which is pretty nice and then of course it gives you the csda which is computer science teacher association i believe um standards as well so it talks about more of the the coding things uh so sequencing events loops conditions uh things like that so if you're a little familiar with that those might um, ring a bell and everything that you need is in here and like I said if you do need materials for the lesson um, it's going to let's go back over here whoops went too far um, provide them for you um, so some of them are downloads uh, you can even print out some stickers if you need to. Uh, this one doesn't have any like physical materials, but if there are some that have something like that, like I said, they will send them to you. So what does this look like? Um, <laughs> so these were done by other kids and you can see what they've, this one's in Spanish it looks like. And so <laughs> they learned about um, making the characters move, giving the characters some dialogue, things like that. <laughs> so just to give you an idea of what a finished product would look like uh, once your students are finished. So it gives you a few of those. 
And for the students, um, there's the four steps. So this one is a, a pretty quick project. Um, it gives them the introduction, um, what their characters are thinking, the survey, and even a wrap up to share their project. So if, for the students, this is what they'll get here. And then when they're done watching the video, they'll click next. And then they'll learn um, how to do all of these. And once they're done with everything here, uh, they go to the next button. And then they have their survey. And then next. And then wrap up and share. So they will have to create a um, Scratch account. So Scratch, if you're unfamiliar with Scratch, let me go ahead and see if they'll let me, if this opens up to Scratch, yes. Um, and I don't remember my Scratch account. So they can sign in and it'll save their, um, but Scratch looks like this. If you don't want to sign in and you just want to play around with it, it won't save anything, but it does give them a little tutorial on how to get started. And even though they probably won't need it because of the tutorial they'll be using in CS first, but this is what they'll use to create um, the lesson here, the characterization lessons. So let's take a look at some of the other ones. So Hour of, of Code is its own website. So let's see, if you go to, um, here they have their own. So even if you, you have some students who have been, <laughs> so I've heard they've been refusing Chromebooks. And so there are some unplugged activities. So you don't have to have a computer to teach computer science, which is pretty neat. So I'll go ahead and open up this booklet here. And you can get these printed out and sent to your students who do not want to use a computer. So they still get some of those skills and some of the skills that the students learn while coding. And yes, not every student's going to be a computer programmer when they grow up, but the skills that they learn are pretty valuable in just about any profession that they'll hopefully <laughs> uh, be in when they grow up. So um, problem solving and um, perseverance through those problem solving, like trying to problem solve, um, reasoning, sequencing, things like that, just um, usually communicating uh, with others that may be a little bit different, you know, learning virtually, but hopefully you can still communicate uh, through meets and things like that. <clears throat> so here is the, uh, the paper version, the unplugged version. And it kind of walks you through some of the activities that they can do um, at home or through these worksheets. So the first one is networking a neighborhood. And then you have um, encode an emoji. So these are still pretty engaging and um, I, they look like fun to me, but I, I like coding. So uh, this one is send a secret message and i think there's one more nope that's it okay so just three on here and i know for the session i have this afternoon i found a lot more so even if you look at unplugged coding activities if you just google that you're gonna get a ton so for those kids that just don't have um access to the computers or whatever they just don't want to you can always find other activities and resources for them um, this is the one through scratch so this just goes back into uh, more of what we just looked at 
this one is um, on dialogue. So each one is a little bit different, and but it still has the same layout for each one. So the students kind of get used to um, the way that it teaches. And I wish I would have um, signed up as a student so I could show you what that looks like um, for the students. Maybe if I go back. No, I don't want to do that. OK, well. I wonder if I just exit out. I don't know. OK. Um, but anyways, once uh, once you get your students started and once you're in there, you can. Like I said, you don't have to start with this first one. Uh, you have the uh, options to go to any one of these that you want to. Uh, whatever works for you. You can see that some of them are these support English language arts. Um, some of them, there are some that I saw that support math, I thought. Maybe not um, art. But then you also, if you notice, some of these are also in Spanish, which is good for those of you who have a lot of. Um, kids who are speaking mostly Spanish or still in that transition there. All right, so any questions so far? Let me go back over here. And nothing in the chat so far. Any, any thoughts, any feedback um, on this? Uh, CS first. Has anyone ever used it? I know I introduced it to a few teachers last year. Um, I wasn't able to see how it went after. And it was around this time where I would go into the classrooms and work with the students. I really miss uh, introducing Hour of Code with the students and working with them, letting, it, uh, letting them play with all the different uh, coding apps. There are more than just uh, CS First out there and Scratch, but these are, are some of the good ones that they guide the teachers along, not just, okay, here's this, uh, here's this website, try these. You know, this one is really nice because it does have all these resources for the teacher. Um, and as a lesson, not just, a, OK, here's an hour. Go play with some coding. <laughs> so let's go in a little bit into that. So you have your your distance learning. And of course, I'm not going to go too much into there, but it does give you some some videos and kind of what I just showed you how to create the class. Um, learning what computer science is if you're not familiar with it. Um, I do, yeah, I guess I should have asked that first. Um, is there anyone here that doesn't know what coding is? And no one's going to speak up, of course. <laughs> You're like, no, not me. All right. And like I said, there's the videos to learn. This is all kind of in the same here. Um, have not done any of their workshops, but, and I, so I don't know if they're free. I kind of doubt it, but they might be. Yes, it does say they were, they're provided for free. Um, of course, with everything going on right now, I kind of doubt it. So I don't know. Maybe they're doing them virtually. I'll have to look into that. So if anyone's interested in those, um, let me know, and I will see if uh, they're available online, maybe. Um, there's a few more things for teachers and students right here under, that was, um, 
under teaching materials, I believe. And so you got your, for your parents so that they understand what's going on. Um, most parents like to know what their students are learning, right? Sometimes. And you got some certificates of completion for the, when they finish. So that's kind of fun. And your roster, things like that. All right, that's about it. I have not gone to the about, but it's just a um, I, uh, I don't know what that one is. So it's just about the scratch and what this is. Uh, all right. So back over here. Any questions? Yes. I got one. I didn't hear it a while ago. So, yes. Um, like I said, this afternoon, I'm going to be doing um, coding for K through second and some ideas for that. This one is third, fourth, fifth if you're in elementary. And there are some really cute ones. Like I think I did the one that I did here, create your own Google logo. Um, so we'll go to that one. That just is kind of fun. It's, uh, a not really your own graphic design, but, um, I'll let you look at the examples here, but they do get to design their own Google logo. Um, and I guess within Scratch, you can have them create you know their own backgrounds um with any type of uh any thing they want in the back you know fantasy sports outdoors indoors um so in a sense i guess that could be using the graph you know making it graphic uh whatever i guess uh topic you're using i'm not sure <laughs> what type of graphic designing you're looking for um so let's just let's just say if i do choose one um and so just blue but yeah they can they can definitely change this. They can change out uh, their sprite. So they can design all of that, the background, and then they can make the sounds. They can create events and make those move according to the, the blocks that they put in to, yeah. There are some other programs that are more for like, um graphic design which i can i can send you those later because i'm right off the top of my head i cannot remember which ones they are does that help a little i was kind of lost there uh cassie but <laughs> all right good so yeah scratch is one of them there are some other ones that are are really neat um as far as like more artsy, with which we would be looking for. All right, any other questions um, on uh, anything that I've gone over? Um, how to do any of these, how to get to a certain area? Uh, I think I covered those. We'll get back to my classes. Um, how to add activities, how to join a class. Um, it's all going to be under my classes. So if I went to add activities to this particular class, I just go in here and click an activity. 
and then I can add it to the class. So if that's the one I want, um, we'll just put this one and add it to that class. And then I can go and see what I need to do before I start, you know, um, giving this lesson with my kids. So like I said, I can go in here before I even teach it and look at it myself um, with the lesson plans here. No other questions? Any feedback? Any any thoughts? Nothing yet. Okay. I have a quiet group of teachers this morning. You're just ready for break, aren't you? We've got a week and a half and we're just like <laughs> ready to be done. Uh, maybe this will this will help uh ease some of the, the kids' tension, give them uh, an hour a day on coding, and it'll be just be blissful. All right, so go back to CS first, and um, that's all I have on CS first. We can go to uh, Hour of Code. So this is Hour of Code. So I thought I could click from it from CS first, but this is who they're in uh, cahoots with, I guess I could say. And Right now, you don't, like for the hour of code, those activities are free. Um, you can sign in for them. And so then it talks about what is it, what is hour of code, uh, why computer science, so it gives you like, of course, the why, how do you participate, things like that. But for the students, there's the activities. And then uh, depending on what grade level you teach, you can guide your students into all these really fun activities. And so let's just say we have a pre-reader. Uh, it's going to give you all of these. And most of them are free. Some of them, uh, they do re require you to sign up. And, and like Tinker, you get like you can sign up and you get just a few free activities and then you're done. Um, with Codable, I think it's kind of the same thing. So this one looks like I can get started. I can play online. Um, so that's pretty nice. Some of them, um, like I said, you might have to sign up. I tried Monkey Junior. Monkey Junior is uh, also available as an app, an Apple app. If you have um, a uh, what's it called, iPad, and uh, so there's those. These are for the younger kiddos, but all the different activities. So if I go up to the older ones, uh, you're going to start to see. A few different ones. There's some CS first, and of course some Minecraft. So um, your kids are bound to find something that interests them, whether it's um, a game-like thing or designing, like we talked about a while ago. I know when I went to, I think third grade last year, a lot of the girls were like not into the gaming one, but they really liked, uh, I think it was called Made with Code, where they got to design um, their own emojis and they got to design clothes. So those, those girls really got into something like that. So that's that one called Era of Code, and that is also available 
for your students. Like I said, most of the ones on there are going to be free. And that's, uh, that's a wrap. That's all I have for you today. Unless you have any questions, I will hang around here a few minutes. I hope you enjoyed CS First and Hour of Code and Scratch. You're welcome. Thank you.